Welcome to my Tower of Fantasy review. First off, I want to start out with a disclaimer. All I have played is the closed beta so far. I haven't played any other versions, so some of this information may not be accurate. I'm just giving you my honest opinion from playing a day of the game. Also too, I'm mainly a Genshin Impact player, so I'm coming from a Genshin Impact perspective. So let's start out talking about the Traveler, or as one would say, the main character. So you start out by being attacked by this Oberus, as my friend would call it. It is not a Cerberus. You're like in a cave and it's attacking you. And essentially you have a guy or a girl. Can't really remember if they were like brother and sister, but essentially remember Genshin Impact where you start out and the god is trying to attack you and you've got to decide who you want to save. So you choose either the girl or the guy. Now I will warn you right here. Whoever you choose is that's the type of character you will be like you cannot choose a guy later on and or you cannot choose a girl later on depending on who you choose but if you're familiar with Genshin Impact that shouldn't be any different. Also too you get the cool Naruto Ninja Storm press button do cool action type of thing. I always enjoyed that so hopefully there's more of that. The customization in this game is actually pretty good. Like, I know with Genshin Impact, you know, essentially you got the Traveler and you're just wearing the same outfit the whole time. I think the most our outfit has changed is when we go undercover and we pull out a random mask. I don't even know where we got that mask, but, you know, that's essentially what happens. I know a lot of people were, when they went to Inazuma, they were hoping maybe we'd get a new outfit and maybe get, like, a kimono or something, and we were sadly disappointed. This game, pretty much you can change almost anything. Like, I remember... The only downside for me is like I wanted to make a certain type of character, but they didn't have the hairstyle, so I just ended up going with Hanada. Also, for those people that don't want to spend a long time trying to figure out what they look like, they have a popular section, so I was actually able to get Hanada by looking up the popular section and then changing a few things so that way I have my own original style. That that works, right? Yeah, this is probably one of the only games where I was actually able to make like an anime type of character. I know my friend, he ended up making like a character that looks somewhat like Itachi slash Sasuke, so I thought that was pretty cool. Now let's talk controls. For me, I use a controller and my friend, he uses a keyboard and mouse. Now I use a controller on Genshin Impact and I don't really have any issues. Pretty much kind of the same on this game. Um, actually like the combat and everything's pretty nice using the controller. The only issue that I have found so far is that with the keyboard, you can change the controls, but on the controller, you can't, it's just set. There's actually like a button on the controller that says, this is coming soon so it's assigned to nothing and i know one of the things in the game there is a, you're trying to figure out how do you how do i heal my character and then my friend's just like oh you just press f2 and you know of course that works so what i have to kind of do is sometimes use the keyboard and the controller at the same time for some of the controls because on the controller there is no option to kill yourself, it's just not there, which I don't know why we didn't make that the uh, left mouse button since there's nothing assigned to it, or I don't know why it won't let me assign things, but again, this is a closed beta, so hopefully they fix that feature, maybe they just weren't able to get it out in time, so we'll just have to wait and see. Alright, movement. So, to start off, you got exploration mode or guided mode. Now, guided mode pretty much just directs you to all the quests, has like a blue dot to where it just locates you directly right there now exploration mode does that for like some things i'm assuming like main story quests but i think guided mode is just better because like it's an open world so you can just go get flowers find boxes open up crates and get all that stuff but you still have the blue dots directing you to the right location so once you're tired of exploring you can just go right back to the main story also like Gitchin with statue of the sevens you pretty much got like teleporting towers so where you can like teleport to that helps you get across the map much faster so that way you can get closer to your missions. So I definitely recommend just doing that, you know, essentially just look at the map, teleport, and, you know, get to where you need to go. What also this game actually provided, which I think is pretty nice, is they gave you a lot of just things to help you get to locations faster. Like you get like a jetpack. Later on throughout the story, you get essentially like a motorcycle, so like a mount, so you can actually get to places pretty fast so i didn't really take too much time like there was like one like major big boss that a lot of people were attacking and then i think i was a little too under leveled so it just kept killing me but i pretty much just kept getting on my bike and coming back and then um i was able to 
kill the boss with everybody else and get the prize at the end. The combat in this game is actually pretty nice. Now, with Genshin, you essentially have a team of four to where they do skills and bursts, and you combine those to do elemental reactions to defeat your opponent. In this game, it's kind of similar to where you have weapons with different attributes on them, and you can switch between those weapons to take down your enemies. And as you fight, you can charge up your other weapons, so when you swap to a different weapon, it does like a special animation that does a lot of damage. Also, you kind of have like a skill ability, I, I would say, that's, you know, 20 second cooldown, so you can kind of do more damage. So basically, you're like weaving in normal attacks, using your skill off cooldown, and then once you charge up enough energy, switch into a weapon. That's mainly what I've been doing to take down most of my opponents. And one other cool feature that they got is like you have like a dodge ability. So like if you dodge at the right time, think of like Beto's perfect counter, you can like slow down time and just get like free damage. One other thing I'll mention is you might want an attribute type of each element because just kind of like in Genshin where you know you got Amber and she can shoot down twigs or whatever and burn things down. They have that in this game to where you need like a fire arrow to burn something or burn a tar pit. You're gonna probably want an attribute of every element if you wanna unlock everything in the game. And on top of that, this is kind of like an open world to where you can play with multiple people. So you can actually have like friends that you play with and you can use those to take down enemies. So, you know, I'm assuming once we kind of get later in the end game or I join big dungeons, you know, there will probably be like teams of fours and we're just constantly switching our weapons and trying to do the most damage to take down this boss. Alright, pay to win versus free to play. Now on the first day so far, I haven't really seen any need to really spend any money, but again, this is just the first day. And even with Genshin, like, really until you reach the end game, there you never really need to get any certain character like you only need that really strong team to beat the spiral abyss and then you really can't do the spiral abyss until your adventure rank 45 so that where you can actually start getting artifacts for your characters to actually be strong enough to beat the spiral abyss so even if you just have the starter characters you still need to wait till adventure rank 45 to actually start building them up and in this game like Pretty much me just staying as the starter person and getting the couple free rolls that they give you, just kind of like how Genshin does, was pretty much enough to get through the game. I didn't really have any struggles once I leveled up my weapons. That's what really made things much easier. So just like Genshin, you know, if you don't level up your weapons, you're going to be having a tough time. So definitely do that. But what I'll tell you, at least from what I've noticed with the rolling system is essentially you know you can get copies of certain characters and that character is essentially a weapon so it's like if you get a character you're basically getting that weapon type now you can play as that character and you can do special animations or you can just play as your character that you choose so they kind of make this game to where it's just like hey you know how the traveler is generally useless and you barely ever choose an ancient impact in this one, you can always be the Traveler. You just basically take the abilities of the really powerful characters that you summon. And just like Genshin, there's essentially constellations. I think there's like six stars, so you essentially need seven copies. But one of the things that they have in here that makes up for it is they have like a pity system. So if you did spend money in the game, how their pity system works is once you reach 80 rows you're guaranteed like the five star in the game essentially but you can get lucky and before you hit 80 rows you might get a five star automatically but that pity doesn't reset so you know if you end up getting lucky and you get a five star on 40 rows then in another 40 rows you're gonna get another five star so you can probably spend a lot less money and get maxed out five stars if you do spend money in this game like if people are familiar with how the weapon banner used to be you know one staff of homa you probably get max out 
five five stars in this game just to get one staff of home up all right now the story now for the people that want to kind of quickly rush things through this is actually a pretty good game for you pretty much like through all the random cutscenes that i did they had the ability to skip there are some cutscenes that you're forced to watch but for the most part you can actually skip through almost anything now, i just ended up watching it because i wanted to kind of find out about the story just to see what's happening but even with that and this could be because of a closed beta i still wasn't really quite into it because it seems like they haven't got the voice Did both you and Zeke grow lines here? for most of the characters like one of the main characters that you talk to in the beginning of the game like it's like a little girl and her father they don't have any voice lines so you're just kind of like reading what they're saying but your main character mm -hmm. actually talks so that kind of threw me off because you know with Genshin Impact main character never really talks until you know I to where I was actually shocked when we played that uh one story quest minor spoiler to where we saw our brother slash sister and then they were talking I'm like oh we actually can talk that's weird um but in this game main characters talking to um the character and then you're just kind of reading their dialogue box and then as you get a little later throughout the story there's like this emotional scene but I was kind of drawn out of it because I'm just reading subtitles and there's like this really cool emotional music so it was kind of weird and that threw me off then there's this really epic cutscene but it's all in Chinese so for the story uh, they need to work on it a little bit you know get those voice actors but it might have just been because this is a closed beta they're mainly concerned with the combat system how people are enjoying the game people rolling and seeing how that works and you know they can always just hire voice actors and fill in all that gap by the time the game actually releases also too one thing that is kind of nice or could be bad depending on the person playing is they have like a time gated story so you know kind of with engine where essentially every six weeks we get a new patch and we have new things to do but essentially you can get the main thing done in a week maybe two tops and then there's just a bunch of events how this game does it is like you can progress through the story as far as you can but then they're just like hey um this other thing won't be unlocked until nine hours from now and then some like side story missions you have to be a certain level and i think they even cap your level like you're just stuck at level 18 and i know one side story mission says that you have to be 24. so my only question with this is is this a thing to where once i start the game that i have nine hour like once i reach a certain level then the countdown starts or is it just like here's a clock on everybody so if someone was to start today they can immediately go into the second story once they reach the certain point like if it's the latter i think that's actually pretty good so that way you know people don't get too far ahead and then you know it's also one of those games that you don't have to constantly play forever to stay relevant and here are the other features that I saw in the game. Essentially, you have guilds. Um, my friend just kind of made one. It's really just me, him, and my other friend. So we haven't really seen much with it. There's like a guild quest that you can turn in. And I think it levels up the guild. I don't really know what guilds do. Because it didn't really do much, at least on the first day. And then you have like daily commissions, kind of like with Genshin, where it's just like, hey, go around, do these commissions. And, you know, they're important to do, I'm assuming. I don't know exactly what it all went into. Like, I think just playing the game, I knocked out, there's four that you have to do a day. And just kind of playing the game, I knocked out three without realizing that I was doing them. So they don't seem hard to do. They seem probably just as easy as Genshin Impact, where it's just like, oh, it'll take you a couple seconds to knock it out. But it's just one of those daily things that you have to do. That covers everything that I noticed on the first day. Mainly I cover Genshin Impact content on this channel. A lot of Spiral Abyss videos. Check out my latest one here. Other than that, that should do it. If you guys want to see a part 2 or a part 3 or just want me to kind of continue this, let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, you guys have a great day.